In today's video, we got a 2013 Dodge Ram. Customer complaint is the LCD screen in the middle has stopped working. So let's dig in. Now with the cluster apart and power wired to it, I can give it a test and see if the uh, backlight or image or at least the direction to go in on what's going on with this thing. So I'm gonna power it up. And if the backlight's out, I got my bright flashlight here. And I do see, there you can see that. There's a, there's a Dodge emblem that just popped up. And there it says low fuel. So we have image, that's good. We just, uh, we have no backlight. So now I know what direction to go in. So next I'm gonna see if, is the backlight bad in the LCD housing or is the power supply that's feeding the LEDs bad? With the cluster flipped upside down now, the uh, thinner ribbon wire is for the uh, backlight, whereas the wider ribbon wires for the image. But I am getting power. Come on. There we go. 18.6 volts. I'm getting power at the LED ribbon wire. So pretty safe to say the LED driver is fine. We're getting power to the connector. So the problem is inside of the LCD itself with the backlighting. With the LCD panel peeled apart, we can see that it uses 10 three volt LEDs in an edge lit configuration. It only has light shining in uh, one side edge. But it does look like I may have found a bad LED. I got my power supply set to 3 volts. If I can get on that joint. So we have a good LED there. I think the flickering is just my test lead connection. Another good LED. Good LED. And this one here, I can't get to light in either direction so I think maybe this was the culprit it uh, opened up and could no longer complete the circuit this LED here I accidentally broke while I was peeling it apart but the other nine seem to be okay um, so next I have to come up with a way to replace these 10 LEDs which looks a lot like uh, laptop screen uh, LEDs and maybe this one up here is bad too. Hmm. Taking a close look at the original LED strip, you'll see that there's two independent channels that these are split off in. So there's five on one side, five on the other. You can kind of see the, the four large tracks in this ribbon wire. Um, and even if you look at the uh, board, you can trace out the connector to these two separate uh, transistors that are in control of the two independent channels. So I scavenged some LED strips from an old laptop LCD and I got a group of five here and another independent group of five here to kind of simulate what was going on here. So hopefully um, the voltages will play nice and, uh, and the controller on this board won't know uh, any different. Here is the LEDs wedged into the edge there. Got my finger on the power supply so I can't point it out, but we do now have backlight. So that is a step in the right direction. I've just cut off and reused the original ribbon wire from off the original LEDs and soldered them to the new LEDs. I have ran into a bit of a problem, and that was with my original measurements of testing the LED power supply. When I took the test, I was referenced to ground. This little uh, copper air right here is tied straight to ground, and I took uh, the measurement within reference from ground to the positive side of the LED drivers, and that's when I was getting the 18 volts, which makes you think it's, well, doing something that's working. It turns out these transistors that I find found out were tied to the two separate channels of LEDs. These transistors pull the LEDs to ground when they need to turn on. So my reference should not have been to ground. It should have been to the output of these transistors. 
So that way, when they're turned on and grounded, that's when I know I'm getting power to LEDs. So it turned out that maybe this whole time, the logic that controls the LEDs is the problem. After shorting these transistors on uh, to pull it permanently to the ground, it, it does turn on now. So even with those LED transistors permanently tied to ground, it still needs both battery constant and ignition uh, to turn on the backlight. So here's with both battery and ignition, and you see the backlight's on. If I disconnect one, backlight goes off, so there's still backlight on-off control. And then if I switch wires, the backlight's still off, so it's still turning the backlight on and off. So I am thinking those transistors, wait for the beeping to stop. Uh, those transistors, I'm assuming, are just for backlight control, the dimming. There's probably an option in here to control how bright the screen is. So I'm assuming that's what those transistors do. They probably pulse the backlight to control the brightness and maybe something in that circuit is acting up. But uh, there doesn't seem to be any ill side effects to shorting out those transistors. In other words, I'm not worried about the battery draining dead with the key off because it's still shutting off the backlight when the truck is off. So we might just be losing backlight dimming. And I'm going to offer that as an option to the customer because according to the mechanics that uh, brought this to me said that they got a quote from the Dodge dealership at $1,300 uh, for replacement cluster. So they'll probably be more than happy to lose backlight control to save themselves over $1,000. So we will maybe just continue on with repair and see what the customer says. There's a mystery component on the LED strip that is tied to the two small middle tracks on that ribbon wire and it appears to be a temperature sensor. Here I was hoping that if I put the temperature sensor back in the circuit, that would be what it would need to turn back on. But in the end, it didn't make any difference. This transistor still didn't turn on even with the temperature sensor. So I don't overdrive the new LEDs I've just installed. I've ended up going with a 100 ohm resistor across these transistors that are refusing to turn on instead of a dead short. With uh, 100 ohms, we are getting 15.4 volts per group of five LEDs. So 15.4 divided by five is three volts per LED, which is exactly a good health safe amount. This one's going to have to be done for now, being that the mechanic promised this customer he'd have his truck back the next day, which gave me 12 hours to figure this thing out and get it working. But uh, it's kind of a bit of a hack job having to disable the backlight dimming, but I have a feeling the customer will be okay with that, being that they're going to have an extra $1,000 in their pocket from not having to go through the dealership. So this one's done for now. Uh, if you know anything about the backlight dimming circuit on this cluster, feel free to share below, and we'll see you next time.